Hi, welcome. Um, today for our tech talk, we are going to be talking about internet hacks for beginners. Um, I kind of designed this class in my uh, keeping in mind people who maybe not are not super comfortable using um, the internet or are looking to kind of improve their internet browsing experience. Um, so today we're going to cover some things that I use fairly often and some things that I think are pretty handy tools to know when you're on the internet. Um, but I wanted to start off by introducing myself. My name is Caitlin Seagraves. I work at Central Library in downtown Tulsa, um, where I teach technology classes and I run the Digital Literacy Lab. Um, every Friday at noon, we are doing a different tech, top, tech talk on a different topic. Um, next week, I believe we are discussing machine learning, so kind of the basics of that, which should be pretty fun. Um, but today, we are going to be talking about internet hacks. So all of the slides for today's class, you can actually find at this link here, tinyurl.com uh, slash tcclhacks. I will send out both a link to this slide as well as um, a recording of this talk. So if you wanna reference it later, you are welcome to do that um, at this link. And I need to reload this really quick for some reason. It is not working. There it goes. Okay. Um, so we're going to talk through a few things. If you have any questions throughout the talk, feel free to drop questions down in the chat um, or we can chat afterwards if you need some more one on one instruction since it's just the two of us today. Um, but the first question I want to answer um, for everybody is what is an internet browser? Um, so when thinking about using a computer, there's lots of different moving pieces to it. You've got your computer that you're working with, you usually have things like a keyboard and a mouse. Um, a web browser is kind of the basic software tool that most people use most often on a computer. Um, so a web browser or a browser is a piece of software that you can use to access the World Wide Web, uh, the internet. So essentially when you're browsing the internet, you request information and the, the browser will bring back that information in the form of a web page. I actually pulled this definition straight from Wikipedia because I think they described it really well. And if you're looking for more information on the different pieces of a web browser, I definitely recommend you check out this article on there. Um, but a web browser is not the same thing as a search engine. Um, so usually when I speak to newer internet users, um, the first thing they think of is Google, a tool for looking things up. Um, we're actually going to use Google Chrome today and the Google search engine is pretty well integrated into the browser, but it's not quite the same thing as an internet browser. So a lot of people get those confused, but I just want to let you know, it's a piece of software that lets us access the internet. Um, an interesting bit of thing, uh, an interesting bit that I learned today, um, the most used browser currently is Google Chrome. Um, about 64% of internet users um, I believe that's in the, I think this is an international statistic, but I did not look too far into it, um, are using Google Chrome. In large part, this might be because Chromebooks exclusively use Google Chrome, and I know a lot of students use Google Chromebooks right now, um, especially with distance learning. Um, but followed after Google Chrome, the most popular is Safari at 18%. Um, Safari is a browser that's mostly found on Apple devices, um, like iMacs or if you have an iPhone. Um, and then after that, some popular browsers include Firefox and Microsoft Edge. Um, so if you have a Microsoft uh, device of some sort, it probably came with Edge as kind of the, the basic browser. Um, and then Firefox is actually the browser that I use most often when I'm not at work. Um, a, a thing to note about Firefox um, as a browser, it essentially runs the exact same as Google Chrome. Um, it just has some additional privacy features on top of that as well as some additional like usability features. Um, I'm not going to go too far into it because today we're actually going to be using Google Chrome throughout this presentation because it is the most often used browser. Um, but before we start, we're going to take a quick tour of Google Chrome. Um, so I actually am using a, a slide deck on Google Chrome already. Um, so I've already got the software open. Um, but when you are using the internet um, and you want to open up a browser, um, you on a Mac, you can go down to the bottom of the screen, you can find your browser and open up a new window. Um, 
I'm sure most of you know how to open up a browser if you're here on a Zoom call, so we can, we can skip that bit of information. Um, but on the browser, there's a few things that you'll, you'll, you'll notice. Um, here at the top of the screen, we have this bar that you can type into. Um, this is called the address bar. This is where you can type in web addresses that will take you to different internet sites. Um, some things to note about Google Chrome in particular, and this is something that you can find on a lot of other browsers as well. Um, they've started putting site information um, very easily findable on here. Uh, so this little, this little padlock here, um, when I click on it, it, it tells me that my connection is secure. Um, we're not gonna go too much into security on browsers. Um, today, because that's a whole other topic. Um, but in general, if you are using a site and it is not secure, you should never put in personal information into that website. And again, we're not going to go too far into the why. Um, there are some other things that you can do on here. You can uh, let, allow or block pop-ups on that site. So if you're on a site and there are a lot of pop-ups, this is an easy place where you can block pop-ups. Um, you can also come in here and look at the cookies that, that are used on this website. Um, cookies are kind of a confusing thing if you're not familiar with them, but essentially when you're browsing the internet, um, it saves information about your browsing um, and collects information about your browsing. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a tricky thing wherein the internet is paying attention to what you're looking at, or the, the web browser is, look, is paying attention to what you're looking at. Uh, but it's also customizing your internet experience, um, which means, you know, if you're shopping on a website and you add something to your cart on a shopping site, um, if you go away from that site and you come back, the cookies that are saved to your computer will save uh, your shopping cart. So you don't lose that information every time you click off of a site. So cookies aren't necessarily bad, um, but they are a thing that exists. And I would love to go into more detail at a different time. Um, over here to the left, we have our little home button. If I click the home button, it will take me to my home page, uh, which does not work. I am currently at home, working from home. So this, this is a website that usually goes to my, my inter intranet for work. Um, there's also a reload button so you can refresh the page. And then in Google Chrome, uh, you have a bookmark bar, which we'll get into later. And I'm actually going to go ahead and hide that so you guys don't have to look at that. Um, over here to the right, there are some things. Um, we're going to talk about, again about bookmarks a little later, um, but I have some browser extensions added to my browser, which we'll get to later. Um, these three dots over here on the right, which are kind of small and hard to see, if you click them, uh, this takes you to a whole list of things that we will talk about in further detail. Um, but some things to note, you have a zoom button. Uh, so if you are maybe uh, seeing it like vision impaired or you prefer to have your text a little larger, um, you can actually pretty easily make your page easier to look at um, using the zoom feature, which is pretty handy. Um, you can also come in here and find things that you can find in a lot of route like uh, apps like a print button, uh, settings, um, but that is just a quick tour of your browser. Um, also up here at the top, we have tabs. Um, uh, we're going to talk about tabs later because there's lots of things you can do with tabs. Um, but that is that, and we will go back to our slides. Um, so one of the things that I like most about Google Chrome as a browser, and one of the things that I think makes it one of the friendliest browsers to use is that you can add multiple users. Um, so say you have a computer that you share at home. Um, and you have multiple people using that computer to browse the internet. Um, one of the things that you can do is actually uh, make it so that you can have different identities on your browser. Um, and another thing that's really great, if you have a Google account, you can actually hook up your Google account to the browser so that it saves things like your bookmarks um, and your browsing history. And then whenever you use that identity across multiple devices, all of that information will stay there, which is great. So I use Google Chrome on my work laptop. I use it on my personal laptop. I use it on my work computer. I use it on my other work computer. Yes, I have three work computers. It's ridiculous. Um, I use it on my cell phone, on my tablet. Um, and because I can sync all of those devices together, my browser will retain that information between all of my devices. So it's pretty handy. 
Um, but if you have multiple people in the house and you want to uh, set up multiple users on your browser, you can do that pretty easily. Um, another good use for this, I think, is that you can have multiple identities in, in your browser. Um, Firefox, I think this does, does this a little better. Um, like maybe you're concerned about privacy or you want to use the internet for different purposes. Um, like I have a personal browser that I use and then I have my work browser that I use and my work browser has more of my professional bookmarks saved and then my personal browser has my personal stuff saved. So just something to keep in mind there. Um, but to, to add multiple users, up here in this top right hand corner, um, there is a little icon and if you're not logged in, I don't know quite what this looks like. Uh, but for me, it has my name in it, Caitlin. And when I open it, it has this information right here. Now, other people down here, you can see I've got some multiple users on this computer. I've got my roommate. Um, I've got my work account that I made specifically for this class today so I could show you a few things. Um, and then there's also guest browsing. So if you have somebody who comes over to your home, and they want to browse the internet, but you maybe don't want them to have access to all of your information, you can set up a guest browsing station for them. Um, but it's pretty easy to add users. You just go add, you add a name, pick an icon, and then you hit the add button. And then once you've done that, it will show up here in this list of users. So I'm gonna hop on over um, to my digital literacy lab user. And whenever I open it, you can see um, this information has changed in the top right hand corner. Now it says Digital Literacy Lab and all of my bookmarks have disappeared. So I've kind of started fresh with this browsing session and I could go through and customize this um, and it'll look different from my other user uh, profile on here. So pretty handy. Um, now, looking at some of the settings that you can change in your browser, I think is a good first step whenever you download a new browser, um, just so you can make it, you know, personal to you. Um, so to, again, to find the settings, up in the top right hand corner, you can find these three dots, and then you can open up settings down here. Now, in the settings menu, there are lots of things you can pay attention to, and actually, we are going to do this on the profile I set up so you guys don't run into anything that I don't want you to see. Um, so we're going to go settings and take a look at this. So you can see it is synced up to my dig.lit.lab at gmail.com account that I created today. Um, I can come in here and um, manage my Google account, which I don't really want to do right now. Um, if you use another browser and you want to import your bookmarks and settings, uh, this is a thing that you can do pretty easily um, with within settings, which is handy. So if you want to make the switch to Google Chrome or to another browser, most browsers have a way to import in, uh, information from other browsers. Um, now, some things that are handy in settings um, is in particularly in Chrome. And one of the reasons that I think so many people use Chrome um, is because you can do a lot of things kind of automated. Um, so Recently, and I say recently, I want to say they've added this in the last couple of years, um, Google has a password manager set into it. Now, when you are using passwords on the internet, it's always best to use unique, long, and custom passwords for each website that you log into. That can be really hard to do practically, um, but if you use a password manager, like something in Google Chrome, um, this password manager will actually suggest passwords for you and then save those passwords. Um, so you don't necessarily have to come up with passwords every time you're on here. Now, since I just created this account, it doesn't have any, but say I come over here and I want to log into twitter.com. I am going to, I don't think I have an account, but I'm gonna see if it lets me. And then I'm just gonna type in hello out there and hit login and the thing it does here is it says would you like to save this password um, and you can see if i hit this little i button it'll show you the password that i just typed in um, and it will save my username and my password so anytime i try to log in and i'm just going to hit save on this anytime i try to log into twitter.com this information will pop up here um, and if you have multiple twitter accounts you can save multiple passwords for multiple accounts on here. Um, 
I'm only showing you this because this is not an actual password in, in login, but that's how that works. Um, another thing that the browser can autofill for you is payment information. Um, if you decide to use credit cards on the internet, um, this will save your credit card number um, and information. And to use the credit card, you have to type in your security code. Um, so there is a little bit of security there, but I, I don't personally use my, my credit card information in browsers. Um, I prefer to use PayPal when I'm buying stuff online, um, but that is a thing you can do. You can also set it so that it autofills password or addresses for you. So if you use the internet a lot to do online shopping or apply for things, um, you could come in here and add a pass, uh, you know, a information about your street address. And then when you go to websites, it will actually autofill this information for you as you're browsing. So I am just filling out a little bit of information about the library and read. And I've got this profile set up here so that if I were to go fill out an application, it would autofill my address, my phone number, my email address, and I don't have to type all that stuff out myself, which is handy. Um, another newer feature in the settings that I really super like is a safety check. Um, I only recently noticed that Chrome has this, but what you can do is actually go through and run a safety check. And what it does for you is it makes sure that your browser is up to date. If it's not, it'll give you a place to update that. Um, it will go through and look at all of your passwords and let you know if you have any compromised passwords. Um, so if you're unfamiliar with that, um, I'm sure you all have heard of data breaches. They happen fairly often. Um, you know, I'm, there was a credit card company that ha recently, I want to say Capital One, maybe had a, a data breach recently. Um, literally every company and service at some point has had some sort of data breach. Um, in those data breaches, sometimes some of the information that is stolen from websites are your passwords. So what this service does is it goes through and it runs all of your auto-saved passwords to make sure that none of them have been compromised. And if they have, it'll list out the ones that have been compromised and encourage you to go update those passwords and then save it back into your password manager. So it's a good way to make sure that your passwords are still secure. Um, there's also uh, extensions. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about extensions. Um, I have a few extensions that I've added to my browser, but I'm pretty careful about the ones I add. Um, because not all extensions are good extensions. So again, we'll get to that bit later. Um, also in the settings here, um, you can look at some of your privacy and security settings. Um, you can clear your history on your browser. Um, so when you're browsing the internet, it generally saves information about your browsing session. So it'll, it'll save like what websites you've been to, um, it will save cookies from all of those sites, those things that we talked about earlier. Um, and then it'll also save files and images um, that will help you, um, like say you go to facebook.com every single day, it'll preload some of those images onto your computer so that when you get to that website next time, it loads a little faster. Um, so not all of this information saved is necessarily a bad thing, um, but say you're on the internet and you don't wanna save that information. Um, you can erase your last hour, you can release, erase the last day of information in the last seven days, you can erase all time. Um, and then there's also some advanced settings here, uh, like you can erase your passwords that we set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that because that twitter.com password that I did earlier was fake. Um, and then I can also go ahead and erase that address and hit clear data, and it will clear all of that browsing information off of this particular user's browser history. Um, but I'm gonna hit cancel on that because it takes a se second. Um, so, and then kind of down here, appearance, you can customize what your browser looks like. Um, so say you prefer to have, you know, kind of a pretty design, you can download different color uh, designs. Um, so I could make it sea foam if I wanted to. So I think it said sea foam, you can almost smell the ocean. That sounds like a terrible thing to have to put up with when you open your computer, but okay. Um, you can also set it to show your bookmark, bookmark bar or not, which again, we'll talk about later. 
Um, you can also come in here and change your font size. Uh, so if you, again, need larger font when you're browsing the internet, that's an easy way to find that. Um, and then a little further down, you can change your search engine. Um, so most people have heard of Google. It's, it's the most popular search engine um, we have in the United States. Uh, but there are several different search engines you can choose from, um, including Bing, Yahoo. I've never heard of Ecosia, but it's a thing. Um, one that I use fairly often is DuckDuckGo. So if I wanted to set it um, so that my search, my, my browser search DuckDuckGo when I use the search feature, I can set that there. Um, and then you can also come in here and manage your search engines um, and say I never want to see Bing. I can just go ahead and delete that. Um, or if there's a search engine that you want to use that isn't listed here, you can add it down here. Um, and then the thing that I usually recommend people customize is the on startup option. So um, whenever you open a browser um, for a new browsing session, it will open to a page and you can actually set what that page opens up to. Um, so you can set it so that it opens to the new tab page, which looks like this. Um, you can set it to open up to the last website you were on, or you can have it open up to a specific set or a, a specific page or a set of pages. So say I wanted my website to open up to tulsalibrary.org every time I open a browser, but then I also wanted it to, to open up to tulsaworld.com. Um, I can add those in there. And then whenever I go and open up a new, let's see if it'll let me do like a little, okay. Um, so I think if I come down here, it's a little hidden, new window. Okay, so I probably have to quit out of my browser to have that work, which I'm not going to do because this is where my slides live, but you can, you can customize what what your internet opens to um, at this point right here. There's also some advanced settings, um, like if you wanted to change the, la the language on your browser, like maybe you're a Spanish speaker and you would prefer to have Spanish be the, the uh, default language. Um, you can also add printers if you'd like, um, which is the whole thing. And you can also go in and uh, look at some of the accessibility options. Um, so, you know, automatically put uh, captions onto things or um, they have additional accessibility features that you can add onto your browser for like hearing impaired or um, even like screen reading. So that's a thing that you can do in here as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. The settings, you can do so much um, and definitely recommend you check it out. Now bookmarks um, are probably the handiest thing um, to know how to use if you're kind of a newer internet user. Um, bookmarks essentially let you bookmark pages so that you can get back to them later. Um, so, you know, say you pick up a book at home um, and you don't know what you're looking for, you have to search for it every time, or we could book, put a bookmark in there um, and find it anytime you need it. So in um, Chrome, there's several different ways that you can save bookmarks, but the two easiest I'm gonna show you um, are the two easiest I'm gonna show you. So, say we got a tulsalibrary.org. Um, oh, and I'm going to switch over to my other account here. So, oh, here we go. Okay, so you guys see we, we fixed the uh, homepage that it opens to here. Um, but say I wanted to save tulsalibrary.org as a bookmark. I can do that with this little star right here. Um, and it'll let me fill out some information. So I can change this to the Tulsa Library, or maybe I just want to put library because it's really the only library I use. Um, and then you can decide which folder it gets saved in. Um, I actually want it to show up here in my bookmark bar. So I'm just going to leave it there in my bookmark bar and hit done. And now anytime I want to go to the library's website, I can just click this and it will take me there, which is pretty handy. Um, but say you also wanted to um, add another page. I'm trying to think of any page that I use, lynda.com. Um, I can add this bookmark either with that star that we used earlier, or you can go over here to the right to these three dots and go into bookmarks. 
and it opens up this menu here. Um, I can select bookmark this tab or bookmark all tabs. Um, so I'm just going to select bookmark this tab. I'm going to save it to my bookmarks bar and I'm going to go ahead and shorten this just so it says Linda. And now I've got two bookmarks here at the top. Now with your bookmarks, um, they actually have a really easy way that you can manage what they all look like. Um, so I can come in here into my bookmark manager and um, other bookmarks shows up over here under this. Um, but I can also come in here um, and create folders. Uh, so say I wanted to add a new folder and make a folder of recipes that I want to try. I can create a recipes folder. I can go ahead and add a new folder called things to read. So maybe this is where I bookmark all the articles that I want to read. Um, later, uh, I can organize stuff specifically into these folders. So say we're in Tulsa world again, and I want to read, uh, oh, here's one. Chesapeake Energy is cutting 200 from its workforce today, the Oklahoman reports. That's sad. Um, but say I want to read this article later, I'm going to go ahead and hit my, my little bookmark bar and change it so that it saves into my things to read folder. Hit done. Um, and now that I'm over here, I can go into my bookmarks bar and find this, or I can go into my other bookmarks and find the article here under the folder that I created. Um, another thing that's handy about this, especially this manager, is it makes it pretty easy to move things. Like say I wanted to put my things to read folder that I created in my bookmark bar, I can just drag this up here and now it exists a little bit easier to catch. Um, I could also move my recipes up here. And now when I'm browsing the internet, this bar will stay up here with my folders that I've created, um, which is just kind of handy. Um, if you don't want to see this bar when you're browsing or like maybe you're showing somebody something on the internet, but you don't want them to see, you can hide it pretty easily by right clicking on it and selecting show bookmarks bar and it goes away. And if I want to find my bookmarks, I can come over here and they are still right here. Um, so they're still accessible, even if they're not showing at the top. So bookmarks, super handy. Um, another thing to note, if you close out of your bookmarks, um, say you accidentally had like uh, 20 tabs open. Oh, we're going to get to tabs later. I'm jumping ahead. I need to not do that. Okay. So extensions um, in a browser are super handy. I just pulled this definition from uh, the Chrome website. Um, but in a browser, you can add extensions to customize your browsing experience or to uh, have tools added to your browser. Um, now, extensions are basically little small software programs that get installed onto your browser um, that customize your browsing experience. Um, Usually extensions are kind of single purpose, so they will have one thing that they do. Um, and they should contribute to a common purpose. This actually, this, this specific um, definition was made more for people who develop them. Um, and if you want to develop your own Chrome extensions, you can learn how to. Um, but I'm just going to show you a quick couple of extensions that I use um, just to show you how they work. So. Up here in the top bookmarks bar, um, you can see I've got like these little icons here. This first one right here um, is called HTTPS Everywhere. Um, this extension actually routes every page I'm on directly over to an HTTPS website. So when you're on the internet, um, all internet uh, address bar, all addresses have um, HTTP. Um, at the beginning of them. Now, HTTPS um, is a, a, a secure version of an HTTP. Um, it's a little technical and you don't really need to pay a whole lot of attention to it, but HTTPS is secure. HTTP is not always secure. So this browser extension for me always routes me to the secure version of a website, which is, is handy so then I don't have to think about it. Um, this extension that here I have 
is my Bitmoji extension. And what it does is it allows me to copy and paste ridiculous, um, you know, animations that I can add to all of my slides, uh, which I'm sure everybody loves just as much as I do. Um, this extension here in the corner is called the Wayback Machine. I use this all the time. Essentially, it goes through and it finds old versions of the internet for me. So say I go here to wikipedia.com and I am looking at the Tulsa City County Library website. Um, and down here at the bottom, I go to a reference that is kind of old and doesn't work anymore, um, like probably this one is broken. Um, it looks like we have a dead website here. And sometimes if there is an old version of this available, um, this will take me to a older version of this web page. And fortunately, it looks like that does not exist. But um, say I'm also on the Tulsa Library website, I can use this browser extension. Um, to go and find another version of this website. So I can go to the overview. And I could actually go back to a version of the Tulsa Library website from 1998 and take a look at the December 12th, 1998 version of the Tulsa Library website. Uh, shockingly, it looks super old, <laughs> um, but I can see what the library's website looked like in the 90s, which is kind of cool. Um, so these are just a few extensions that I have installed, uh, but there is a whole catalog of browser extensions that you can add uh, to customize your internet experience. Like there are some that give you a custom cursor on your screen so that your cursor could always look like a kitty cat if you wanted it to. Um, but there are some that will change the appearance of your browser. Um, or you can integrate tools um, like Grammarly is one that I know a lot of people that use. Um, basically Grammarly goes through and it suggests, uh, you know, like grammar changes to things you might be writing. Now, one thing I will warn you with browser extensions is that when you install them, the browser has permission to look at your website or your, your internet usage. Um, oh, that was a good question about HTTPS. Um, not all sites have a secure version of, of their website. Um, if you were ever at a website um, that is not secure, it, this little lock right here will show as unlocked, so not secure. Um, but websites have to actively add in a secure version uh, for that to exist. So, um, you know, uh, five years ago, the library didn't have an HTTPS website. We do now. Um, because our security person in our IT department got a security certificate for it. So um, I use this because it automatically will send you to one, but you could actually go straight to H, uh, you know, ESPN, the unsecure version. Um, it exists, but with HTTPS, it'll automatically send me to the secure version. So not every website has a secure version. That's a good question. Um, so if you are adding extensions, just one thing to keep in mind, um, not every extension is your friend. And when you install extensions onto your browser, it can read all of the information that you put into your browser. So, um, you know, if you are really interested in that kitty cat cursor, you are welcome to do it. Just know that I would not personally do it, but you can do it. Um, and back in that settings menu that we were in earlier, um, where it did like the security check um, for us through settings and safety check, um, one of the things that it does is it checks for harmful extensions. Um, so that's the thing that I would recommend doing often because not every extension in the, in the extension store is something that you should install onto your browser. So just keep that in mind. Okay. Um, so the, the thing that is probably the most useful thing that you can learn um, today um, are keyboard shortcuts. Um, so Chrome, as well as like your computer, has a lot of shortcuts that you can use on your keyboard to do things faster. 
Um, now, I'm using a Mac computer here. I don't know what kind of computer you all are using at home. You might be using a PC or a Linux machine. Um, but I've linked to this page here um, from the slides, which I will send out later. Um, and you can see all of the browser extension or all of the shortcuts that exist um, for Chrome. So we're just going to take a look at the address bar shortcuts because I actually learned something new today whenever I was getting ready for this. Um, now, say I want to open a new tab and perform a Google search without using my mouse. This is telling me, um, or I can up here at the top type in ducks. I want to search some ducks. Um, and then Alt Enter. It will open up a new tab for me and search ducks in a new tab. So that's kind of a new one that I learned today. Um, but if you look through here, you can see there's lots of different things that you can do. Um, one that I used earlier that I didn't tell you I was using um, that I also learned today, which is probably the handiest thing I got out of this class today, um, is when you open up a new tab and you're searching something, um, say I want to search wikipedia.com, um, I can type in wikipedia.com and then on my keyboard I'm going to hit my tab button and I can type what I want to search for. So I'm going to type Tulsa City County Library and hit enter. It will search wikipedia.com or wikipedia.org um, for the search term that I put in. So I don't have to route to wikipedia.org and then type in my search term. I can do that all in the address bar. Um, so I would encourage you to look through this list. There's lots of things on here. Um, probably the ones that I use most often are to open a new window on your on your on your computer. Um, you can do control N or sorry, control N. Um, I'm on a Mac, so instead of control, I use command. Um, and if you're on a Mac too, you can see there's a whole different list for specifically for Mac users. Um, but take a look through these, try some of them out. Um, I learned something new today just by looking at this list. So uh, and if you're kind of a new computer user altogether, um, there are keyboard shortcuts that you can use to copy and paste. So for copy, it's Control or Command C, Paste, Control V. Um, but keyboard shortcuts can be a big time saver for you, just when you're using a computer in general. So I would encourage you to learn them. Um, now, some things that are specifically handy. Um, that I wanted to mention um, with, with a browser and specifically Chrome. Um, I'm just going to go to a website really quickly uh, and say I go to this coronavirus information page on the library's website. Now say you're like reading a web page somewhere and there's a word that you want to look more into. Um, so here, locations opening for TCCL Express service. Um, and say I want to Google Rudisill Regional Library. I can write, I can highlight it with my mouse, right click, and select search Google for Rudisill Regional Library. And it will take that key term that we just searched and open it in a new uh, tab in a Google search. So I can come in here and just do a quick search uh, for Rudisill Regional Library. And I didn't have to type it all the way out. Um, now, one thing I should mention, and I probably should have mentioned this at the beginning, um, your search engine is built into this browser here in the address bar. Um, so when you open um, a tab or a browser window session, browser session window, um, you'll notice here at the top when there's no address in here, it says search Google or type a URL. Um, basically, what I can do in this, rather than going to google.com to search like we used to have to do, I could actually just search Google right up here in the top bar um, and it'll take me to a Google search. So it's kind of integrated into your browser, which is super handy. Um, and just another way to do a quick browse, right click and it'll search whatever you've highlighted. So. Handy, handy, handy. Um, 
Another really great tool, um, especially if you're on a shared computer, um, but you don't want to worry about it capturing your search history or your browsing history, um, one of the keyboard shortcuts that you can use on your computer is Control Shift N, or if you're using a Mac, it's Command Shift N. Um, so I'm just going to do that really quick. I was going to show you, but it's hard. Um, that will open up a new incognito window. So an incognito window in Chrome basically takes you to a web page. Um, it looks dark here because it's incognito. Um, you can also up here um, exit incognito pretty easily or just close it out over here. Um, but some things that an incognito window does when you're using the internet, it does not save your browsing history. So you can't see once you close out of this session, it won't save what websites you visited. Um, it will not save cookies or site data, that stuff that we saw over here earlier. Um, it won't save information entered into forms. Um, but it's not super secure. Your um, activity will still be visible to, like if you're on a work computer, your employer can still see your activity. Um, your internet service provider can still see what you were doing. So if you have like Windstream or AT&T or Cox, they can still see what websites you visited. Um, and then one thing you can turn on, and this is actually pretty new, um, you can block third party cookies. So websites won't track you between pages, what you're visiting. Um, and you didn't ask, but I'm gonna show you because I think this is fun. Um, I think I have Firefox on this computer, let me check, okay. So I'm just going to show you kind of briefly what uh, trackers do, because I like to terrify people a little bit. Um, and I think I can find it here. OK, so <coughs> I'm going to reset this data. So when you're browsing the internet, um, web pages have things called trackers put onto them that, that follow you through your internet experience. Um, I'm going to go first to TulsaWorld.com, just so you can see what it looks like, um, and point out some things that were probably trackers on this page. So the first thing I noticed up here at the top, we've got some advertisements on the website, um, more advertisements. Down at the bottom of the page, there are links to Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, and when I come over here to Firefox Lightbeam, you can see these are all the trackers that are on that web page that we were just on. Um, and some of these are probably a lot of these are for um, advertisements that are on the page. Um, but there's some things like Google.com. There's probably one for Facebook and Twitter and Instagram on here. Um, and these are all the, these are all the third party trackers that are on that website. So we went to one, one website and we have a hundred third party trackers, um, that have followed us. Um, so do I have any recommended companies that block tracking? So there are a couple of ways that you can block tracking. Um, if you're using an incognito window, it automatically, um, and if you have this little third party thing selected that will block your trackers. Um, <coughs> another website or an, another tool I recommend using um, and I use it personally is I use Firefox instead of Chrome when I'm browsing the internet. Um, but there's also extensions that you can add on to your browser uh, that have third-party tracking blocking. Um, and just to kind of show for the recording sake of this, I'm going to go to one other website um, and show you a few third-party trackers that, that locked on here. So we're at two sites and we have 109 third-party sites um, that can see what we are doing as we browse the internet. And some of these have, are in common, like there's an Amazon, Google, uh, another Google thing, another Google thing, and another Google thing. So just two websites, almost 110 trackers is wild. Um, if you're using Chrome, um, I really like a tool um, by an organization called EFF.org. 
Um, they have a service called Privacy Badger that you can install um, pretty easily. If you go to privacybadger.org and click install, I think it should automatically install onto your browser. Okay, so it'll take you here and then you can add it to Chrome uh, pretty easily. And the Privacy Badger will go through and um, <coughs> automatically black tra block trackers for you. Um, and you can see as you're browsing the internet, I wonder if I can pin it here. Okay, so with our little Privacy Badger installed, um, it'll, it'll block trackers for you. So I can go to tulsaworld.com with this installed. And you can see here, it's detected 13 potential trackers on this page. And I can go through and select block for all of them. Or, you know, maybe I want Facebook to track me through the internet. I can let it do that. So I like Privacy Badger. Um, it's updated and they, they update their lists pretty often. Um, and it's developed by the Electronic Frontier Foundation, which is an organization that I trust pretty well. So this is the one I usually recommend for people. Um, but another way that you can track block, uh, block trackers um, is through incognito browsing, but the one that Firefox has, I think is much better for this. Um, and one thing that's great about Firefox, if you do use Firefox, is it is essentially Chrome. So it has all of the same features that Chrome has, uh, but it's, a little, it's, it's better. So I use Firefox personally, but I use Google Chrome at work. So um, we did that already. Okay. So tabs are a thing that stay kind of up here at the top. Um, so you'll notice earlier that I've had like multiple web pages open at certain times during this talk. Um, the tab up here that you are on is, is, is one tab, but if I wanted to add an extra tab, and you can kind of notice these kind of look like folder tabs that you have in like a, a filing folder type of situation. Um, but I can open up multiple tabs. Oh my gosh, I can't type. And, oh, I think it's logged in my Twitter. I will not show you that. Um, <coughs> go to youtube.com. Okay, so here I have four tabs open. Um, I can close out of them pretty easily with this little X right here. Um, one thing that's pretty handy about Google, um, and especially if you use it between multiple devices, if you ever close out of a browser and you like lose all of your tabs, um, don't panic too much. You can come here into your settings, go into your, your bookmarks or your, sorry, your history. And what it will do is show you all of the recent tabs that you've had open. So you can see these are all the tabs I've had open recently on this computer that I'm on. Uh, but you can also see the tabs I had open on my personal computer and on the two work computers that I use um, so that I can easily hop over to those. Um, and reopen those pages without trying to figure out what I had open. Um, now this does not uh, work if you delete your history, um, but if you ever accidentally close out of your browser and say you had like 20 tabs open that you had to get to, you can pretty easily open them, which is great. <coughs> now we've covered a lot today. I did not actually think it was going to go on this long, but that's, that's great that we had so much to talk about. Um, but if you want to learn more about using the internet. Um, these are a couple of courses that I looked through and I really liked um, that are available via lynda.com. Um, Lynda is actually a free service that you can access through the library's website. If you go into tulsalibrary.org, go to research, and take a look at our databases. Um, Lynda is a website <coughs> where you can get free technology classes. Um, that you can watch from home or at the library. Um, but I'm not going to log in and show you, but I've linked to a couple courses um, that I really liked. And one of them kind of goes further into the Chrome browser. And then the other one is on some online search tips and tricks. Um, because there are a lot of tools that you can use when you're searching for stuff on the internet that I thought it to be really handy. Um, today's slides you can find at this website here, um, which again, I will email out to everybody. 
Um, but thank you for joining me. If you have questions, um, please drop them down in the chat, or if you want to turn on your camera and ask, you're welcome to do that. Um, but thanks for joining me today.